What's up everybody, Dan here from Headwaters Kayak. It's May 6th, the weekend before Mother's Day weekend. The paddle sport season is about to kick off and really get going. I thought it'd be kind of fun to look at the different kayaks they have available, talk about the different price points, and I'll give you guys my two cents on what I think a good value is for a starter kayak. You can see they're prepared for it. They've got them all lined up in the windows out front. Little pedal boat. Our Dick Sporting Goods and Rigging always leans heavy into paddle sports. And this year's no exception, they are fully stocked. They've got the Tetons in a few different colors. We've reviewed that boat a few times. But look at the price, it's jumped up to 479. We'll have to look at some old videos and see what it used to be. Inflation is really, guys, all the kayaks are a little bit more than they've been in years past. It's also interesting to see they've, they've got a lot more pedal drives. They've got the new Perception Crank in here, the Catch 140, the Perception Pescador, all pedal drives. This is another one that's kind of cool looking. I would love to test this out. It's a Pelican Getaway 110, which is sort of like the Hobie's new Lynx. Just a little different, a little bit obviously cheaper. But man, it's got a pretty cool little steering device on here. I've played with one in person. I'd really like to review that kayak. I think it's an interesting, interesting craft, especially for a thousand bucks. They got the Field and Stream Blade, which we reviewed this a few times. I'm a big fan of this kayak. I think it's a good design. Um, $399. Our first one we got for, I think, $169. Okay. Now, I have had a lot of feedback from you guys about the seat on this thing, that the seat does not hold up. So, heads up on that. You know, I only review these things for like a day or two, but a lot of people comment in the comments of those older videos, and they're a good resource for uh, if you wanted to find out more information for people that have actually used the kayaks and spent some time with them. Another thing that's cool is the Field and Stream Count with the sit-on-top version of the blade. I'd like to try this one out because it's got the same hole design, but it's just an on-top version. It's got a few tracks around the boat. This is a dumb place for a track. That's right where you're going to paddle. That's completely useless. That needs to be like up there, out of the way. Anyway, but it's probably still a nice paddle in a little boat. These ones are all $3.99. That's not a bad value. You got the Perception Swifty Deluxe 9.5. Those have gone up in price too. And honestly, they're really good quality, really well made, but they just don't paddle that well. The Hook Angler 10.5, that one's got a nice seat. Big open cockpit. This reminds me of the old Perception Prodigy. It's got the tank well on the back. Six seventy nine. So on the expensive side of things, but that's a really nice little kayak right there. We've got some Vibe kayaks in here as well. We used to sell those at the shop. They were all right. The quality of them is marginal, especially for the price at five ninety nine. I think there's better things out there for not that much more money. These ones here. These are Vogue kayaks. You've seen these at Costco for a lot of years. This kayak's been around forever in different forms, but this is a really nice little boat. They're well made. The only thing I don't like is the seat is not very supportive in this. There's a real low back deck on this, so it's not a lot of support for your back. But well made overall, good paddling kayaks. These here, this is my avoid these kayaks at all costs. I really am not a fan of the Sun Dolphins. They're just tippy for what they are. The seats aren't very comfortable. I think you're better to go look at the Lifetime Teton for 50 bucks more or check out a Lifetime Tamarack at Walmart. So this is our paddleboard department. They've got a few hardboards. These ones are plastic, 449 for the uh, the Fathom here. Those things are heavy though, I will say. You know, there's so many good inflatable options that are not that much more money. You know, I think, you know, 650, you can get a nice inflatable. That's way lighter and easier to deal with than that. The High Life Sups are 11, it's got the seat on it. You can paddle like a kayak or a paddleboard. A lot of people like those, those are 850. Again, though, man, you can get a good inflatable paddleboard that does basically the same thing that you could strap a cooler to for the same price and not have this big bulky thing to deal with. Kids kayak, 279, doesn't come with a backrest. It's a sweet little kayak though. Those are well-made, heavy duty. I've been using the Lifetime ones for my kids for the past couple of years, a little bit less expensive and they definitely work really good. Yeah, so this is what I'm talking about right here. Instead of getting one of those hard boards for you know, 500, 600 bucks, this one's $6.99 for an inflatable. And I've actually heard really good things about these body gloves. My friend Ken Whiting reviewed one. He was pretty impressed with it. You know, there's obviously better inflatable paddleboards out there, but you know, for the price point, $6.99, it's not too bad. And speaking of better paddleboards, check this out. They have a boat sup. These things are not inexpensive. That's an $1,100 paddleboard. And they have them at Dick's. I'm really surprised to see that here. That is like top of the line, heavy duty. And what the difference is, you get a lot more drop stitching, a lot more stiffness in the deck on a high-end paddleboard. They feel absolutely hard and rigid when you're on them versus something that's $6.99 is gonna still have a little bit of flex, feel a little bit more flimsy. 
but you could buy two for the price of one of these. More inflatable stuff over here. They've got the body glove, the Conley, Aqua Glide inflatables. In fact, the Chelan is one that we've actually reviewed on the channel. We did the Chelan 2, I believe it was. Really nice inflatable kayaks. Drop stitch floor in those. The Deschutes 130. It's wild to see Dick's kind of leaning into the little bit more high end side of things. It's not all just like cheap basic stuff anymore. They've got boats up to, you know, 1,000, 15, 1,600 bucks. They've also got some 12 footers and you guys always say it in a lot of my videos, but the longer the boat, the better it's gonna paddle. So if I was looking at these, I would definitely be looking at this range. This is like the Blade 120 for 449 and then the Axe Elite, which is 479, basically a sit on top version of the Blade. That's what I'd be looking for, I think. The Pelicans are still well represented. They've got a lot of the Mustang 100s, Mustang 120s. That is definitely the one to get if you're gonna be getting a Pelican, in my opinion. You know, they just have a little bit more features. On a, the video I did a couple years ago, I kind of talked about the differences. It's got this little storage compartment, which is not waterproof, a little bit higher seat. It doesn't have that little scooped back deck that lets the water drain in. So if you're gonna get a Pelican, the Mustang's a good way to go, 399. Anyways, they've got a pretty good selection. They're definitely leaning into the higher end stuff with the pedal drives. You know, like the Perception Tandems, those are super well made. Ocean Kayak's a name brand, those are super well made. One thing, if you're looking at these two tandems and comparing the two side by side, the Ocean Kayak's gonna paddle a little better, be a little smoother through the water. It's just an overall smaller kayak. This one's gonna have a little bit more volume, hold a little bit more weight. And the seats on the Ocean Kayak are a lot heavier. Duty. They're these canvas ones that are gonna hold up a little bit better. These ones right here are just super, super cheap. You're gonna be replacing those your first year you have this kayak. Paddle wall's looking pretty thick with paddles. I got a lot of different stuff up there. I'm gonna check out this new body glove paddle. I've never seen this one. Well, it's definitely cool looking, but man, when you pick it up, it's pretty janky. They do like an adjustable length thing here with a couple of aluminum shafts, but with that, that thing vibrates all over the place. Eh, that's not something I would recommend for you guys. I think for the money, if I was gonna buy one here at Dick's, I would just go for the shoot. It's 50 bucks, decently made. I've used this paddle before. Little stiffer ferrule, it's not knocking around. It's not adjustable length, but just get the right size for your boat. If you're looking at a sit on top, get a 230 to 240. If you're sitting inside, get a 220 to 230 and it'll get you by. So in the past every year I came in here and I bought five kayaks and reviewed them all. With inflation and the cost of doing that, it's just become almost non, not cost effective. And the other thing is I've reviewed pretty much everything that they've sold with the exception of some of the higher end pedal drives. I'm gonna try to get in touch with my perception rep and see if I can get a crank to demo and get on the water before you guys. But until people start sending me boats, it's really hard for me to just invest the money to buy five kayaks, especially now that they're $500 and up. You know, in years past, it was like, all right, 200 bucks, 300 bucks, I can get five boats and sell them and maybe I'll lose a little bit. But at 500 bucks a piece, five kayaks, that's 2,500 bucks. And I just am not ready to do that this year. But I'm gonna grab this Blade 120 because I love the Blade 90. I've never tried the longer one. So I'm gonna take this one, give you guys a review and uh, tell you what I think. All right, so here it is, a Blade 120 by Field and Streams. I don't know who makes this kayak, but it is surprisingly similar to a Pungo 120. Like even to like the, the back hole, like that is Pungo 120 all the way by Wilderness Systems. So hopefully Perception's making them for them. If not, they got knocked off pretty hard. But overall, it looks like a really nice hole design. It's gonna be good tracking, big open cockpit, nice deep keel, buoyant edges. This thing should be really stable, really smooth on the water. Look forward to checking it out. All right, so here I am walking out with what I felt was the best value in Dick's Sporting Goods this year. $4.49 for the Field and Streams Blade 120. It's been my favorite kayak in years past, and the fact that they made a 12-foot one I think is really smart business. I also got myself one of these rocking chairs. These things are awesome. Next stop, we've got to go out to the lake and put this thing through its paces.